The last time that I did a video about Kickstarter and 3D printers, I asked a question of, you know, is it right for established 3D printer companies, really established companies of any kind, I suppose, to be using the platform of Kickstarter to promote their, you know, new product. And there were some of you who had some strong feelings on the subject and felt that, no, that wasn't right. Well, I've got some good news for you. I have here a 3D printer on Kickstarter from a brand spanking new, still green on the vine 3D printing company. And uh, this is a good chance for you to put your money where your mouth is. But that's not as bad as it could be. Because these guys are so new, you might think, yeah, do they know what they're doing? And let me tell you, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, I'm grateful anytime somebody contacts me and says, hey, would you be willing to review my 3D printer? I realize that a lot of them want to do it because they think that my audience will be good for them, but I worry sometimes. I don't want to tell people yes and get their printer and then look at it and go, yeah, you guys are charging way too much for your machine when people can get something that does something just as good for less money. I'm, I'm always worried about that situation. And I'll be honest, with Kaiwu, I was a little bit concerned about that. But those concerns evaporated the moment I printed with this machine. Let's go over the specs real fast. 24 centimeter cubed build volume makes it not quite as big as a CR10, but bigger than an Ender 3. A direct drive feed system, you know I love that. And they've upgraded the user interface with something more than just bare Marlin. It's a wonderful touchscreen interface. And the BL Touch that's already on there. Now, I have to admit, I've never used a BL Touch system before. I, I know, I know, I probably should have, but I don't know, I kind of had this feeling that if a 3D printer was, was going to, you know, not have its bed plate where I could level it. I didn't trust it, but wow, getting to hit print on that first print and having it just work really, really impressed the heck out of me. So breaking this down on my usual three axis scale price, they're telling me it's going to be under $400. And I, I assume that that means $399, which is a pretty good price for a machine of this size. That's about the same price as you'd pay for a Flash Forge Adventure 3, a machine that I frequently recommend, but mostly because the price is good and it's super easy to use. And as far as ease of use goes on this machine, they do have an upgraded touchscreen interface, so that puts it a little bit better than Marlin, but it I'll be honest, is not as good as the touchscreen interface, again, on the Adventure 3. However, the build volume and the direct drive on this one puts its capability way above the Ender 3, above the Adventure 3. It is pretty darn capable, especially at the price. But where this machine really shines is in the engineering of it. It's <coughs> solid and it's quiet. I've been running it this whole time during the video and you can't hear a thing. And this isn't noise canceling or anything. It's fans are whisper quiet. It's stepper drivers. It's motors are whisper quiet. This printer is quiet enough that you could put it next to your bed and sleep while it's running, which you should absolutely never do because of toxic particles spewed by 3D printers. But for the noise, you could. And this, I think, is the strength of Kaiwu. In fact, these guys, let me tell you a little funny story about my interaction with them during the setup of this machine. One place where this machine needs a lot of work, and, and hopefully they'll fix it before the end of the Kickstarter. There's no reason why they shouldn't. But the manual that comes with it is garbage. I mean, it tells you how to put the machine together, but honestly, it wasn't hard to figure out how to put the machine together. But what this manual doesn't have is a single word of instruction about how to set up a slicer. And I always look at 3D printers from the perspective of what if this is somebody's first 
3D printer? And would this be a good first 3D printer for someone? And the fact that it doesn't say a word about how to set up the slicer isn't a good thing. And there's no slicer on the SD card, nothing. So I contacted Kaiwu and I said, hey guys, what are the settings that I need to use for the slicer? And they responded back to me with, oh yeah, six millimeter retraction and turn off coasting. And I'm like, no, 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 guys. What are the settings that I put into the machine window? For instance, like in Cura, in this window right here. And they responded back to me, not with the settings that I needed to put into that window. They said, you're using Cura? You should be using Simplify 3D. The prints it makes are much better. And I went, oh, I know who I'm dealing with here. These guys are engineers in the purest sense of the word. They see a problem, they see that it has a clear solution. They understand that there is a right way to do things and they have largely put that into this machine. Now that said, I was able to get the, those slicer settings, 24 centimeters cube, flip the Y heated build plate by looking at their website. But I do hope that in the future, they'll think a little bit more about a first time user experience. Somebody who has never used a 3D printer because this machine ain't bad for that particular user provided that they give it the documentation that it needs. I did notice that when I printed the chibi pumpkin head at four times scale, that there was some corner ringing. Eh, that's not as good. I should probably turn down the speeds for it. An easy fix on that one, but for a machine this solid, I was kind of surprised to see that. I also have been playing with some printer blocks. I did lose an entire set of printer blocks that I printed because they shifted just a little bit off the build plate. Why did they shift? Well, because the glass build plate that they put here only has two of these little alligator clips holding it down, and that's not enough to prevent it from slipping around. An easy fix is just get a third or a fourth alligator clip, but they don't quite leave enough room for them along the side. So I pulled off these tiny clips from my JG Maker A5S and then ordered some new ones to replace it. And I'm gonna use those to put it down. You could also upgrade this with a magnetic flex plate and that would solve the problem entirely. Now, one problem I had while I was putting this together is that they're filament holders. And I'll be honest, I'm not a super fan of this particular filament holder. It's just a little clip that holds on to the V extrusion that they have here, this 2020 extrusion they built this thing out of. And uh, one of them, when I was snapping it in place, broke. But I was able to model a replacement for it and have it 3D print its own replacement in PETG. Now, I'll be honest, I probably want to replace this filament holder with something a little bit more, um, with a peg on it. Now, one thing that I thought was interesting was they told me that they've developed their user interface themselves, but uh, this is very clearly a MakerBase user interface. It's a good MakerBase user interface. High resolution, high contrast. They did a good job with it. Although if I'm being totally honest, I'm not in love with the menu for when you print things. It shouldn't be a bunch of icons. It should be list of things. I mean, I can only see like seven letters of the file names. <sighs> you know, guys, if you are developing this, can you fix that? Still, Overall, do I like this machine and would I recommend it? This is a machine that I would not tell anybody they made a mistake in purchasing. And I might even recommend this machine to some of my friends who want something a little bit more capable, but still easy to use. Okay, so quick note from the editing desk. I was really surprised when in making this video, I compiled the numbers that I assigned to this video to the numbers that I assigned to videos in the past at just how well it ranked in comparison to other printers. Now, I don't wanna bog down the video with numbers and facts and stuff like that. That's what the blog is for. So if you'd like to know more about that and just exactly how I compile those numbers and what they mean, then scroll on down to the comment section. There'll be a pinned comment there with a link to the blog at 3dpprofessor.com and you can read all about it. But the short version is that I was super impressed by this machine in the end and I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, let's go back to the pre-recorded content.
I want to thank my friends at Geetech for providing the filament that I used in all these test prints. And if you're watching this video as it comes out, they have got a sale going on right now on their Amazon store. I will go ahead and put a link in the description so you can check it out. Their filament is really good. I mean, this, this orange is beautiful. All of them. They're fantastic. They flow well. Pretty happy with this for PLA, but you know, it's hard to make me angry for PLA. So that's it. Go check out the Kickstarter. And if you are one of those who believes that Kickstarter should only be for companies who are brand new and just starting out, well, here's one for you and a good machine for the price. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. All right, that's everything. Let's grab some B-roll.